Are you a serious dinosaur model collector? Do you want to improve your collection by making better buying decisions and avoiding models that have design flaws? If so, this is the show for you. This is episode three of the Dinosaur Toy Review Show, and today we are going to review the Mosasaurus figures that are currently available on the market. As always, George is with me. Hello, everybody. And as we always start off, George, what is the fossil record of the Mosasaurus? So Mosasaurus is... Well, there's lots of Mosasaurs, but typically the one we think about is Tylosaurus, the big one, especially if you are a Jurassic World fan. That is a greatly exaggerated size of a Tylosaurus. But the fossil record of, of that one, or Mosasaurus in general, is pretty good. In fact, uh, most of them that have been found, at least the best ones, are found in Kansas. So, believe it or not, that flat area used to be underwater. In fact, most of the Midwest was underwater. Have you ever worked directly with a Mosasaur fossil? Yes. So I'm originally from Texas, and I have had the pleasure of going on a dig where we have found Mosasaur material, a few scattered vertebrae or backbones, and some teeth, which are very, very nice. Do you have any of those at your house? I do. I have. Oh, really? <laughs> I was not expecting that answer. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Any float teeth that aren't attached to the skeleton, they're not associated with feeding or are not associated with an injury, then, you know, if we have plenty, then it's it's okay. So, George, before we get into the individual figures, what areas are we going to be looking at on these specimens to see if they're accurate or not? So, first, we're going to look at the flippers and tail. So, those are the biggest uh, features on a Mosasaur since it was aquatic. Another thing I'm looking for is the mouth. The Mosasaurs are very famous for their teeth as well as the scales. So we know that Mosasaurs had scales since they are related to Komodo dragons, pythons, they're in order Squamata, which means they should have scales. So why don't we jump right in? George, which model do you want to start with today? Let's start with the safari. So the first thing I notice when I see the safari <laughs> Mosasaur is its mouth. Now, this little guy has a little bit of a frown and it reminds me a lot of the vintage paintings they used to make of what they thought Mosasaurus would look like. In fact, if you look at the tail, it looks just like its flippers. So clearly this was a reptile adapted for marine life, but I will say this is not our most accurate depiction of a Mosasaurus. It does have the nostrils in the right place, but this is not what its jaw should look like. Mosasaurs had very powerful bites, and their lower jaws were a lot thicker than this. This is a very thin jaw. Also, the tail should be um, split in two, so it should have a double prong tail, and it's missing that. It's just one flat paddle. Mm -hmm. What about the texture of this one? I noticed that it's very smooth. Yes. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. So the texture of it is very much like a whale or, or a dolphin, but these were lizards. And I know people will think like, wait, didn't you say reptile early, but now you're saying lizards? These guys are actually in the same family as other dragons and pythons. They're order squamata, so they should have scales. We have found most of source scale impressions. So this guy, since he does not have scales, I would say it's not as accurate as I'd like it to be. I will say if if you do want to get this, it is a great vintage um, style Mosasaur. Which one would you like to look at next, George? So let's look at the Schleich Mosasaurus. First thing, the scales are present. They're all there. In fact, the texture of the scales changes the lower you go on the body, starting out big and small. I will point out that it has spikes on its back, which we have no evidence for. I, th I think they took artistic liberty with them. It makes it look cool, but I will say that, as far as I know, most of did not have spikes on their backs. Let's look at the mouth. So the mouth here is a lot better. You see more of a thicker back portion of the jaw. Um, the teeth are present as well in their own rows, individually painted. It's very nice. Now, a neat little detail that you'll notice is the tongue here is a forked tongue. And that is a recent discovery that we have made since they are related to snakes and Komodo dragons, which have forked tongues. 
that is a neat little detail added on there. Now, one detail that we also should look for is the double row of teeth that Mosasaurus had on the back of their skulls. That is present right there. And one of the things that makes me really happy is seeing that in these figures because it's such a neat little small detail. It is worth noting that the jaw on this figure does open and close also. Now let's move on to the tail. There's that bifurcated tail. It has the smaller fin on the top and the bigger fin at the bottom. Now we have found the Mosasaur's tails preserved in that shape, but the backbone only goes down to the lower part. This fin would have been skin and possibly cartilage. On the color scheme on this one, we see that it's bright green with a lot with some silver streaking and a white underbelly. Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea what color a Mosasaur really would have been? We have a good estimate of what their color might have been. Um, I would say this is not as close as we can get to one. It is countershaded, which a lot of marine animals are. That means they have a lighter bottom and a darker top. But this is a very green Mosasaurus. And there's almost nothing beneficial that I see of a green Mosasaurus in the ocean, unless that ocean itself was green. Typically, a lot of figures that we see of marine reptiles have a darker, uh, whether it's blue, gray, or black, topside and a white or tan underside. So I would say I, I don't, this color scheme is not my favorite. Which figure would you like to move on to next, George? I would like to move on to the Mosasaurus from Papo. The Papo Mosasaur was just introduced in 2023, which is why we did this video at this point in time. So this guy looks awesome. I've always loved Popo figures. And as we can see, the jaw opens and closes. And would you look at that? It has that secondary row of teeth that Mosasaurs are known for. That is a very good sign right off the bat. Now, you will notice something different that we haven't seen so far in the figures is that the, this Mosasaur figure has a top fin. Now, this I am not sure about because there is some evidence to show that they would have had them. But then there are other Mosasaur fossils that have been found without it. So that is a very, um, very neat feature on this one. You'll also notice the flippers are very different on this guy looking less like a dolphin or a shark flipper and looking more like a duck's foot or a platypus's uh, flipper. Now that is also a different take because there is no clear evidence showing that it would have been one way or the other. So this is different, but not entirely wrong. You can see each individual finger within that fin. So that's pretty neat. Now let's move on to the tail. This tail is slightly different. If you notice, this bottom part has the scales, but then this kind of has a frillish texture to it. It is bifurcated, but like we mentioned before, the top part would have been made out of scales and cartilage. But this looks a little different. It looks more like a fish. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. looks more like a fish fin, which is very neat. It's a nice change in texture, but I'm not sure the texture lines up with what we found in fossils. Now, the scales on this figure are also very hard to see, but they are there. They are very small, much closer to that of the ones that we found impressions of. So that's a very, very neat feature. And you can see on the bottom, it has a lighter color and has a darker color on top with a nice gradient. Now these things here, that's interesting. I'm not sure if these are uh, spots or barnacles growing on it, but regardless, I kind of like it. They have some on the backside too, though. Are there not yeah. some little fine humps? Oh, yes, you're right. These might actually be osteoderms. Which are? Osteoderms are bone embedded in the skin that could have acted as armor, I have not seen any evidence of that in Mosasaurs, but I have seen it in other reptiles. Um, they're just toughened scales. So maybe maybe these are toughened scales instead of uh, osteoderms. But if you look at the placement of the nostrils, they're also correct. Um, 
as we've seen. And look at that eye. I do like how reptilian it looks. I'd say this is a pretty good one. Awesome. So let's move on to the last one. Ron from PNSO. This is a big one. This guy is a monster. <laughs> and first, we'll do the mouth test. It does open. And you guys know I'm going in to check if it has that secondary row of jaws. And you can barely see it, but it is there. The rows of teeth are there, but they're not painted. So I would say I'm a little disappointed at that. These teeth are not painted as they were in the other figures but since we're this close you can see that it does have scales all throughout its body so that's a very very positive uh, thing already the flippers are very similar to the papa one but they're smoothed out a bit more not as defined and we've got that top flipper again or uh, top fin not flipper so that is really neat that it, we're starting to see that in these newer figures um Maybe there have been more evidence pointing towards them having them than not having them. The back flippers, if you notice, are a lot smaller than they were in the front from any of the other figures, which is conductive to how they actually were. But I will say these are a little bit too small. Um, as we go to the back, we do have the bifurcated tail. This is a lot more rigid than the other ones, but... I will say, look at that beautiful coloring on the tips. Reminds me of a white tip shark. Mm -hmm. If we look at the belly, you see the lighter counter shade to the top and this kind of rosy pink coloration, uh, similar to a lot of reptiles that have a, a reddish throat sac that they would use for displays. That is a very neat uh, color choice. Um, let's look at the nostrils. The nostrils are a little bit differently placed than other uh, than the other Mosasaur figures. I will say these guys are more closer to the front, but they should be more on the top. So those are my initial observations. But otherwise, I'd say it's it's probably the most beautiful paint scheme I've seen of all of them so far. So George, we've covered a little ground here today. Let's, again, say money is no object. Which one are you going to go with? If money was no object, I would pick the PNSL one. It's it's the biggest. It's the most beautiful. Um, it's scientifically accurate. Um, aside from the nostrils, I would say that this is, this is the one, if money was no object. So you... In your review, though, you said the nostrils were out of place, the rear fins were undersized, and that the second row of teeth inside the mouth were not painted. They were not. That doesn't add up to a strike against this model? Well, you did say money was no object, uh -huh. and um, when money is no object, I tend to go for the more beautiful ones, because those are the ones that are displayed. You can have the mouth closed and not really notice the, the nostrils or the underside of the teeth. As well, if you look at it from a profile view, you can't really tell about the flippers. All right. So now, back to the real world. Money is an object because the PNSO one is generally more than twice as expensive as either the Schleich or the Papo model. Mm -hmm. So, on your budget, which one would you go for? Would you still splurge and go with the PNSO, or would you choose one of the other models? I would choose one of the other models. Um, in fact, I would pick the Papo one. So the Papa one, if money was an object and I had to pick based on scientific accuracy and color, this would be my choice. And then probably the Schleich model after that. And then the Schleich model after that. And then lastly, the Safari model is actually a third of the cost of either the Papa or the Schleich one. And so that makes it... The budget-friendly option. Yes. Doesn't matter, though, because there were, there were some very distinct flaws in this model. Yeah, I would not go out of my way to get this model unless I was reconstructing a vintage uh, collection or set because um, it really is reminiscent of those, um, I think, Charles R. Knight paintings. This is the great kit option. <laughs> do you still have unanswered questions on any of these models or do you disagree with our conclusions? If so, check out below to find out how you can be notified of our live stream question and answer sessions.
After certain episodes, we will put George on the hot seat to answer any additional questions or defend himself if you disagree with his conclusions. Also, I have a couple of favors to ask. Of course, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, but also if you could leave us feedback in terms of how we can improve this show. Do you want more detail? Do you want less detail? Do you want more of Kevin and less of George? Because clearly he doesn't know what he's talking about. Anything you can tell us now will help us improve these episodes going forward. And lastly, check out our poll in the community section to vote for the model you like best and see if the community agrees with you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.